What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Panhandle Fishing with Tank. It's been a long time since I've been able to make this make a video. Um, a lot of things have been happening since my last video. Um, life in general, good things. Thank, thank the Lord. But um, I'm really excited to bring you this video today because you are sitting on a dream. <laughs> Like I said, you're sitting on a dream. You're sitting on a dream. Um, I'm not in the same place I recorded videos before. I'm not in the same garage. Um, thankfully, my wife and family and I were blessed to get into a new house. I was blessed to begin a new career, a great career. Um, we've just been blessed, blessings on blessings on blessings, and God is just too good to us, um, far better than we deserve. Um, and another blessing that he uh, has given me recently is, is what I was talking about. You're sitting on top of. So, you know, I have dreamed about owning a boat since I was a little boy, since I was as far as long as I can remember. My parents, they worked hard, and but we weren't able to own things like, like a boat. And we shoot, we could even go to lakes and fish. I remember, um, I just remember f throwing, you know, waking up on Saturdays, Saturday mornings watching Roland Martin or Hank, Hank Parker and pretend to go in the backyard and pretending I was catching bass in the backyard. So to be from where there to where I am now is it's, it's crazy. And um, I'm able to um, have this for my kids, and I'll get into that later in the video. But I ditched the kayak world. I ditched it. It was great. It was fun for the time being and for what it was. Um, it's just one of those things where I, my daughters are getting older. And, excuse me, whenever I would start... Uh, getting my fishing gear ready for a, a trip on the kayak, my oldest would always want to go with me and it would break her heart whenever she found out she wasn't going with me. So um, I talked to my wife and prayed about it and sowed seeds towards it and believed God for it to be able to afford a boat. And, I, and I'll kind of go into the decision-making process of why I got the one I got after I do a quick walk around. I had some people wanting to do a walk around, wanting to see a review on this boat. And I haven't really seen a lot of reviews. There's a couple of guys who have it online. There's a great Facebook community that has um, that has helped me a lot in my decision making and things. But um, I decided on the Pro Tracker 170 in my garage, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to get a good full view of it. I don't know if that's going to be good or not, but uh, I don't feel like pushing it out out there. Uh, even though it's better lighting, I just look like pushing it. So, kind of give you a full walk around real quick. Um, I'll go over everything in detail here in a minute and the upgrades and things that I've done. Um, but yeah, this is it. A 2020 in Starlight Blue or whatever you call it. Bass Tracker Pro 170. Um, dream, a literal dream come true for me. I've always dreamed of having something like this and this fits me perfect. So starting on the back, I kept my micro anchor that I had on my kayak for the boat. And for those of you guys who know this, I found out later and I'll kind of give you a, a tip here. Um, don't do what I just did here unless you want to avoid your warranty. Whenever I, uh, put you back down for a minute. Whenever I bought the boat, you know, when you buy a boat, and I'll kind of go through the walk, the process of it, but when you buy a boat from Bass Tracker, you know, they give you a walk down and a walk around, and you test all your gears and your gauges. Well, apparently, they're supposed to go over the warranty informa uh, information with you. My guy didn't. He didn't give me any warranty information. He didn't say that if I drilled a hole, in, a hole or drilled anything into my boat, it voids the warranty. So when I installed this, I basically voided the transom warranty. So uh, the only way to avoid that is Bass Tracker sells in, com in combination with, with Power Pole. It's you know, some kind of special bracket that you can buy that mounts the micro or the bigger blades or whatever that doesn't void your warranty. So I didn't know that. It's too late. You know, it is what it is. I have some buddies. I've talked to them about it. I was pretty upset about it at first. Um, but I talked to them about, you know, with these little holes, would they make a difference? You know, could they ever see in the future 
this tearing up and me having to figure out a way to get it replaced. And from all everybody I've talked to, they said, no, there's no way because this transom is built so tough to be able to hold the force of the motor. But we'll see. You know, like I said, I didn't know about it. I believe God's going to protect me and protect my investment. And, you know, it is what it is. But anyway, so like I said, I got the micro power pole. Um, I'm going, here's the spike for it. I'm going to get some clips to kind of um, clip it in so I can haul it around and stuff. Came with the 50 horse. Like I said, I'm not, I don't feel like pushing this all the way out the garage, but 50 horse uh, Mercury. Um, I mean, like any standard. Here's your battery compartment gas tank i think it's an 11 gallon tank um, it's pretty gas straight cheap right now so i went ahead and filled it up i don't know if you can see it but i got the bass pro probably can't see it in this lighting i got the bass pro um their new battery on board two bank battery charger um this is the box for it in case you're wondering um so i uh, got that comes with four four seats two up here that are unmovable two that are movable i've kept one back here for when i have people fishing with me uh the camera's gonna be shaking around so you gotta forgive me um and then this is just my storage you know kind of like pretty much like every other boat got some dry stores got my life jacket got my stuff if i ever game more never wants to see it so fishing line um this boat really and I'll kind of go over why I chose this boat over the Heritage or the Classic or whatever it is now. Um, uh, so this is, you know, another storage area where I keep my ropes and just uh, first aid and whatnot. Uh, do, do the storage and then we'll go to the, to the deck, I mean to the captain's seat. So, storage locker, rod locker. This was for some people. Rod locker wasn't a huge, isn't a huge deal. This is a huge deal for me because I needed it because I just wanted to be able to keep my rods in one place. This thing fits. I don't know. It doesn't. I've heard. I mean, online I think it says it fits up to eight. But talking to the guys on the Facebook page who have this boat, they said some guys said they have up to twenty something rods in here. And I, I'm not. I'm not doing all that. Uh, um, so right now I think I got six or one, two, three, four, I got seven rods in here, I believe. So my paddle, my night, um, my night thingy, my night, uh, navigation, um, I got a lure, retri lure retriever, my paddle, my... I also kept this from kayak fishing just in case I want to catch a Texas share lunker and need to get an official, you know, weight or whatever or length. Um, it also comes with this uh, little cutout area. Now, I know the, I think the 18 and below doesn't have this little space is empty. And I saw some guys who made some aftermarket stuff to fill that gap, but I'm glad they, they went ahead to fill that gap. Gives you more deck space, just a throwable in there. Um, some my, my, my scale in here, some other tools, uh, aftermarket stuff that I went in and put in. I mean, besides that, you know, besides the uh power pole and all that, um, went ahead and put in some buoys for when I'm marking offshore structure. Little magnet strip I got from Harbor Freight, it was like 12 bucks or something. I don't know, I mean, 12 bucks, like four or five bucks. Got my tools on it. Um, this is the live well. I think it's a 16 gallon live well. Um, I've been playing with the pump because I put in the aftermarket timer switch that I'll show you about here. I'll show you here in a minute. Um, comes with the live with the bait well thing for bait. And, and I will tell you this, kind of give you a little inside information. When you get, if you get this boat or any boat, and they, you better make sure that they're going to give you everything that came that it came with it. You print out a deal sheet or whatever it says online. Now you may, this may not be a big deal to you. It was to me because when I'm spending what I spent on this boat, I want everything that said it came with it. They tried not to give this to me whenever it plainly says it comes with it. So, uh, like I said, that's neither here nor there. But, um, like I said, if you're about to drop over 15 grand for a boat, 
for anything really you better make sure you get everything that you that you uh said you know that said it's come with it this is the this is where i keep my bait some people say it's too small this is perfect for me um i mean it's got all my bait in here my terminal tackle i was in here rigging stuff up last night because i plan on going out next weekend uh so there's that again another extra things i added got these off of amazon just rod holders on each side i can't remember how much these were they're really cheap um I bought the, this pedestal is not the stock pedestal. I don't know if that's a good shot or not, but this one because I'm six four and my dad is seven foot. So if he ever comes fishing with me and gets on the front, he's gonna need something like this. But this thing extends. I don't know how far it is, but it fits my fits me perfectly. Anybody, any tall guys out there that need something like that, you can drop it all the way down to standard if you want. Um, bought a butt seat. That's pretty standard. Now I'll also tell you this, at first, you know, I'm always trying to look for ways to save money. Like when I do hear reviews and people say, you gotta have this, you gotta have that. I'm the type of person like, let me try it first because I'm trying to save as much money as possible. And I was not gonna get a seat because I figured, you know, the, the standard seat that comes with it that sits up here. I'm like, oh, that'll be good enough. You know, I need to, my knees are, are, are hurt, hurting from years of playing basketball and you know, just getting older, so maybe I need to sit down. Well, let me tell you something. When you get up here, and I'll get up here in a minute, the seat, the way it sticks out, pushes you off the up front. It feels like you have no space up there. I, it's just a weird feeling. It's hard to explain. But um, so I went ahead and got a butt seat um, to help me out, so I have more space up there, which kind of I'll get into in a minute when I talk about the the foot pedal. Got the aftermarket, um, what is this called? G-Force handle for the trolling motor. It comes with a min coat of 45 pound thrust. Um, got the weedless wedge uh, aftermarket on it. Uh, this is my Garmin I had on my, uh, on my kayak, Striker 7 SV. Um, now, here's the deal on this. Set you down again. If somebody out there can help me, I would greatly appreciate it. But I cannot, for the life of me, figure out whenever my trunk trolling motor is on and 2D, it doesn't do it. Um, but side scan and down imaging, which I don't use down imaging that much, but for some reason, when my trolling motor is on, it gives crazy interference on here, on my unit. And I've tried, when I say I've tried everything at my job, I've even went and talked to electromagnetic engineers and asked them what to do. Did what they told me to do, didn't work. Called Garmin, told them what's going on, tried all their stuff, that didn't work. Called Hummingbird, since they own uh, Minn Kota, or they're the same parent company, they were kind enough to send me some uh, ferrite rings to help block the interference. Did all their steps, none of that worked. I mean, I've grounded, I've tried different battery sources, I've tried everything under the book. So I just give up on it. I don't know what to do. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna replace this eventually and get another hummingbird. Um, but for now, it's just gonna have to make do. So I couldn't figure it out. If somebody else out there knows how to fix that, please help me because I, I just can't, I can't figure it out. So I just gave up on it for now. Um, you got your nav lights. Uh, there was something else up here I was gonna show you that I just forgot. I can't remember. So the most recent install, that we uh, did, me and my buddy Sam, shout out Sam. Uh, we just put in, hold on. Oh gosh. We just put in this recessed foot pedal. Now, I wasn't gonna put this, this pedal in. This is my Panther Marine. Um, this thing, number one, is huge. It is, it is way bigger than normal foot pedal. And when I got it, I was kind of concerned because I was like, well, shoot, I don't know if it's gonna fit and I'm gonna have enough room. Um, but um, I think it works out even better because I'm gonna upgrade the trolling motor eventually. And the bigger the trolling motor, the bigger the foot pedals. So this will fit pretty much any foot pedal I ever put in it. And it came out perfect, I think. Um, Sam really helped me out so much on this boat. Um, <sighs> But yeah, so I didn't tape the install of it. Didn't feel like doing all that. But 
came out really clean. It's perfect. And kind of standing up in this garage, like I said, I'm not going to be able to show you fully because I can't stand up. But without that butt seat, I don't know if you can see this, but without that butt seat being the way it is, this thing pushes you further up, like up in this area to where you can't, I don't know. I just didn't feel comfortable because if you bend over for anything or if a wave hits you, it can knock you smooth over. So I didn't like it. So I went ahead and got the butt seat. Oh, uh, what am I missing? So got my sticker, shout out WT Go Buffs. Um, oh man. So also aftermarket, what I put on it, this Hummingbird Helix 7, uh, Hummingbird Helix 7, this is the G, uh, GPS with uh, Nav Plus from Navionics version. I'm not going to take it out. Um, but we got that installed. Comes with all your pumps, switches, all that. Um, so when I was coming back from, uh, from Bass Pro, my cap fell off. Came out somewhere. So I'm waiting for another steering wheel cap to come in from the from the shop um got your gauges all that kind of stuff horn horn nav lights builds aerator so here's my little uh remote control for my power pole so it comes with a lanyard so i can you know power pull down or up whatever now this i'm this is really simple some of y'all may laugh at me but i'm really proud of myself because i am a not i'm not electrical i don't have much electrical knowledge at all which is sad because my dad is a is a is a computer tech but um this era this is aftermarket it's called the bigfoot three minuteman bigfoot three aerator switch um this it was like 30 something bucks and i had we we had so much trouble getting this thing installed and it was my fault um because it, long story short, I didn't hook up the ground, the negative to the right one, and we just couldn't figure it out. And then finally, my friend Lando um, helped me out over the phone since all of this coronavirus stuff, he couldn't come over. But so my aerator switch up here is now this. My bill still works. I don't know if you can hear that. My bill still works. But now my switch to my aerator is right here. So you got off, you got run, you got. So this is the timer, timer part of it. So it goes, you know, on one minute, off one minute, and then off runs three minutes, off three minutes, or on seven minutes, off seven minutes. So some people, you know, may have been like, you know, you don't want that because you're not going to be any tournament fishing or whatever like that. I don't know. I'm weird. I like little gadgets and stuff. So I, I plan on keeping crappie and stuff. Um, maybe some walleye trying to get into keeping some fish but who never know who knows i may get into a bass tournament circuit or something and i just wanted to to be you know prepared so got your up down trim um hold on another thing let me get down here. another thing that i added um I added these aftermarket Fulton uh, boat, whatever you call this thing, straps. Um, got the other one on the other side. So that's pretty much it. That's 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 the girl calling my California dream boat after my mom because she's from California. Uh, that's pretty much it. So set you down here. So. So why did I decide to leave, to go from not having any payments and owning a kayak to having payments and having a boat? Like I said, my number one factor was my girls, my kids, my wife, and having people with me. You know, fishing is so, I don't know, some, there's something special about fishing, especially with, you, with kids. I remember, I remember very vividly my first fish I caught. It's a little baby catfish. I was probably... I don't know, eight maybe, maybe even younger. And I remember my dad, uh, I showed it to him, this little baby catfish, maybe that big. And I was so proud of that thing. And I hung it up and I was like, Daddy, look, I caught one. And I remember he said, my son caught Moby Dick. And um, 
I just remember how proud he was of me and how I felt. So I remember that and I've always kept that with me. And I want my girls to, I want to be able to experience that with my kids, you know. And people say, you know, a lot of people when they found us buying a boat, they would say, well, you know, the two greatest days in the boat owner's life is when they buy and when they sell it. Well, whatever. I, I, that, that saying gets on my nerves because it's, it's just dumb. But anyway, uh, so my kayak was great. Like I said, I just couldn't take people with me. I can go fishing with people, but I couldn't take people with me. But the problem with the kayak was it was just getting too, it was getting too cumbersome to take it to the lake, to pull it off the, out the rafters or off the ceiling, load it up, drive it, you know, back it up as close as I could, take, put the boondock landing gear on the wheels, push it off and take them, can carry it all the way to the lake. Tired at the end of the day after fishing, being beat up by the waves, pedaling and all that, and you got to pull up to the shore, get out, pull the landing gear out, then grab it and then haul it, pull it out of the water, out of the muck and sand. And in some lakes I went to, you know, I, the closest I could get to the water was 20 foot. So then I got to carry it, or, you know, wheel it through 20 foot of sand or it was just, it, it was just, so I sold, I sold everything and used that money to put a down payment on this. And I'm very happy with it. I mean, it's one of those deals where this boat was perfect for me size wise. Um, I was going to get the classic, the Bass Tracker Classic. So let me go through my decision making process so for those of you guys who, because I remember I scoured, scoured the internet looking for videos and people, reviews and, 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 and things they went through. So let me help anybody out that, you know, went through the same thing that's thinking about going through, going through the boat bond process. Was going to buy used, but my fear with used was I have a buddy who's a, uh, a fisherman and he has a boat and he told me he has a nice nitro I believe he told me he said you know the problem with buying used is if you, you could be buying somebody else's problem and I don't have the time to go to get a marine what do you call them a marine there's some kind of I forgot what you call them somebody knows about boats to have them check the holes check the pumps check this check that I didn't have time to find anybody like that in my area there's not that many so, or any period really so I really didn't feel comfortable buying a used boat, even from a dealer, because all the warranties were gone. Were gone, you know. So then I, I thought, well, what about new? And with the Classic Heritage, it was perfect price point. Everything was great on. The only thing that stopped me from getting that was the um, only thing that stopped me from getting that was the uh, capacity. And you know, on Facebook, a lot of people, you know, who have that, I was in that group too, people on that boat, you know, people have said, well, you know, you're never going to get stopped by a game warden and those are just this and that, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a rule breaker. You can call me corny if you want to, uh, especially with my job. I can't afford what I do for a living. I can't afford to get in trouble legally or even tickets. But, and I've never seen a game warden in any of my lakes at all, period, but I'm willing to bet the minute I would have thought about that boat, and the minute I had somebody over, you know, have people over the capacity, it would be the first time I would have saw one and got a ticket. So, you know, I that one was rated for three. I have a family of four, and this one's rated for four. Now, a lot of people I know see this and they'll say, well, you spent $4,000 more on a boat that's the same size, and blah, 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 whatever. You know, I, after researching it and talking to Bass Pro and talking to other people and dealers, they're the same. They have this boat and the Heritage have some have some of the same uh, have a lot of similarities and but this is a bigger boat. The beam is a little bit bigger. That's why they said they can rate it for four people. So that's why I went ahead and went with it. You know, and I plan on keeping it for a long, long, long time. I don't in our area we don't uh, have a lot of lakes. So um, if I if I live in Dallas or somewhere like that. I would definitely be getting, you know, a Ranger or something higher, a Nitro or some really, 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 really high dollar. But I couldn't justify that spending that much for that long a time in terms wise, loan term wise, um, for something I could only use maybe once or twice a month. So again, this fit perfect for me. Another thing I was going to get, I was either between this or when I decided on getting something that can fit four people. You know, we don't have any track of dealers in my hometown. But we do have a low dealership, low boats, and they're right, literally right down the street. 
And those guys have been Parker Boats. If you're in Amarillo, Texas, in the area, go give them some love. They are very nice people. I mean, I remember when I was young, you know, I would just go in that store just to, just to dream because I knew I didn't have any money. I knew my credit was, I didn't have any credit to even think about getting money. They would still walk me through boats. They were still kind. They were still very nice, patient. And through the years, I would just go in and talk to them and look at stuff, and, and they were very courteous. And um, But they sell low, low boats, and they have the low stinger, 17 is pretty comparable to this boat. And they had a low 16 up there that I could sit in. I do like the layout of the low. It feels like it's a bigger boat. But the thing that killed the low for me, the low stinger, was it came with nothing. When I say nothing, it came with boat motor trailer. It didn't come with batteries. It didn't come with, um, what else didn't it come with? It didn't come with like the safety gear. Like with Bass Tracker, you get all your safety gear that you need to be legal except for a throw cushion, which you can get that, no problem. Um, it, didn't, it comes with your battery. This comes with your batteries. That low didn't come with batteries. You know, your safety equipment, if it didn't come with, I can't quite remember what it was, but it just didn't come with a lot. And I, I was thinking to myself, and the prices, you know, they were going to give me like a, a rebate and some kind of offer and this and that. But without the, op the, the price for this Pro 170 and this were about the same, pretty much neck and neck, maybe $200 off. And another thing that gave the low a neck up in my in my race was the low's right down the street. Again, like I said, the, the deal is right down the street. So if something was to go wrong with the boat, I can hitch it up, drive it over there, they can work on it. This tracker, the hole, if something was to go wrong with this and I had to make a warranty claim, excluding the transom, because I already told you I messed that up. But I'd have to hook it up, and the closest tracker authorized dealer is, I think, Wichita Falls. So that's a good three-hour track. So I really thought about that. And I was like, man, I really, really, really don't want to load this thing up. I mean, that's not even the whole, that's like the gauges. Ain't any warranty claim. I'd take it to a tracker dealer. Closest one is is in Wichita Falls. So it, I just, you know, I was like, man, I don't know if I really want to do that. But again, what made me pull the trigger on this was talking to people in that Facebook group. I mean, there were some guys who had their, their boat for 15 years and said they've never had a warranty issue, you know. And thankfully, I'm blessed with a lot of friends, and I have a lot of friends that know a lot of stuff, know a lot more than I do, especially when it comes to making stuff and fixing stuff. And I got a buddy, if something was going on with the, plot, with the decking, I got a buddy who work, who who's a woodworker for fun. Um, I got a buddy who's an electrician, that's by trade, that's what he does for a living, and he's a big fisherman. Um, you know, I got the only per I got people, friends who can work on aluminum if I needed a patch job or something. The only thing that I don't have, a, you know, any connection on is outboard motors. So the good thing about Mercury is that dealership down the street is a Mercury dealer. So if something was going wrong with that, I can just take it down there to them. But so I just, you know, it's pros and cons. Um, so I decided to go ahead and go with this. I'm happy. I haven't had it in the water yet. I'll be taking it out, Lord willing, next Saturday for the first time. Never even owned a boat. Well, never even a boat like this. I've had a little crappy John boat years and years and years ago but that's neither here nor there um trying to think so yeah I'm excited um I'm thankful so thankful you know the Bible says that Jesus said that he's come to give us life and life more abundantly and I believe that, that when he said life the first part in that scripture he's talking about his eternal life through him through faith through him you get right back you know to the father and in life more abundantly Personally, I think, I believe he's talking about this kind of stuff where blessings on blessings, I guess you could say, you know, blessing you not to just have a home in heaven, but have a good life while you're down here. So I'm very thankful to him. I can't wait to see my daughter's face and hear their little screams when they catch their first fish. Um, I'm excited. Uh, so be looking out videos and, and new stuff coming out from, from the boat. Um... I don't know. I don't think I have anything to say. I'm excited. Hopefully, I'll have some good footage next. Uh, I'll have some good footage next next Saturday. And uh, you guys take it easy and be cool. God, oh my God, if I die, I'm a legend. When they lay me down to rest, I know I was always repping. Oh my God, my whole life, my words been my greatest weapon.